Gloria Graham, renowned for her captivating portrayal of the alluring Violet in It's a Wonderful Life, where she enticed Jimmy Stewart's character in the town of Bedford Falls, is fondly remembered by many. However, behind the silver screen, her life was marked by turmoil. The intriguing story of her final romance with Peter Turner has been adapted into a film titled Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool, drawing inspiration from Turner's memoirs. Gloria's life was a roller coaster of tabloid drama. She entered into marriages with esteemed figures such as Stanley Clements, the renowned film director Nicholas Ray, and the versatile film and TV producer writer Cy Howard. But perhaps the most startling twist in her love life was her affair with her former stepson, Anthony Ray, whom she became involved with when he was just 13. Anthony was the son of her ex husband, Nicholas Ray adding another layer of complexity to their unconventional relationships. Not only males are shamed in Hollywood on occasion. Gloria Graham, for example, shocked the film industry by courting her 13-year-old stepson through her marriage to director Nicholas Ray. Hollywood claimed to be stunned. Stunned. They didn't enjoy the carnality of a woman's authority. For males, the norms were and still are different, and hypocrisy runs deep. Gloria Graham's real life mirrored the seductive allure of the captivating film noir sirens she portrayed in the 1950s. Her Oscar win for Best Supporting Actress in 1952 for her role in The Bad and the Beautiful was marked by a cheeky and true-to-character moment when she sashayed to the podium, accepted the award with a simple thank you, and walked off. However, as the 1970s rolled in, her career faced a gradual decline though she remained active in the industry. In 1979, she was part of a London theatre production of The Glass Menagerie, but her living situation had changed significantly. Once accustomed to the lavish life of a star, she now resided in a humble theatrical boarding house. It was there that fate brought her and Peter Turner together, a repertory actor and a fellow resident, 28 years her junior. What started as a potential brief fling boomed into an extraordinary love affair. Turner was captivated by Graham's charm, yet he recognized her vulnerability, becoming the caring partner she deeply needed. The significant age difference between them raised eyebrows and fueled gossip reminiscent of the scandal in 1951 when she married Nicholas Ray's son, Tony, a marriage that would prove to be her most enduring among her four marriages, lasting from 1960 to 1974. Graham and Turner found themselves deeply enamored, seemingly impervious to the judgment of others. However, time was not on their side, as Graham battled the early stages of stomach cancer, unbeknownst to them, after triumphing over breast cancer in the past. During the initial stages of their passionate affair, they crossed paths with Barbara Broccoli, daughter of the influential figure Albert Cubby Broccoli, whose family held significant sway in the British movie industry through their control of the James Bond franchise. Though the echoes of a Sunset Boulevard-like romance were not lost on Barbara Broccoli, the true dramatic potential of their love story remained untapped. After all, their narrative was still unfolding, and the profound context behind their connection had yet to be fully revealed. Graham's journey took her from the glitz of Hollywood to the unfamiliar shores of Liverpool, akin to a comet in its waning orbit as Turner brought her home to his working-class family. In this household, Turner's indomitable mother, Bella, held sway much like Graham, a force of nature in her own right. Despite their disparate backgrounds, the two women formed an unexpected bond. Bella discerned that Graham's sense of self rested solely on her allure, nurtured by her son's unwavering admiration. Then, in a reverse culture shock, Graham introduced Turner to her world, taking him to her picturesque trailer perched in Santa Monica, where the ocean kissed the horizon, and then to New York, where she still basked in the adoration of doormen and cab drivers alike. But amidst this apparent glamour, reality struck hard when her doctors revealed that the cancer had aggressively returned, this time attacking her stomach. Unable to accept this devastating news, she retreated into a cocoon of delusion, pushing Turner away without divulging the truth. 
Turner's heart ached, believing Graham had returned to her old ways, dismissing their passionate connection as a fleeting affair and callously discarding him. Hurt and wounded, he sought refuge in his hometown of Liverpool, where he was carving out a budding career as part of the Liverpool Playhouse repertory. Graham, too, found herself back in Britain, yet she maintained her distance from Turner, refraining from any contact. She sought solace in the anonymity of theatre work in other northern cities, seemingly finding comfort in obscurity. When questioned about her recurring pain, she attributed it to a digestive problem, firmly believing that natural remedies would eventually cure her. In a poignant turn of events, in 1981, Graham reached her breaking point, unable to perform due to her deteriorating health. Realizing the gravity of her condition, she implored the theater manager to find Turner and inform him of her illness. She expressed her desire to return to Liverpool to recuperate, seeking solace in the familiarity of her past. Unaware of the severity of her illness, Turner readily agreed to help, welcoming Graham back with open arms. She was provided with a bedroom and round-the-clock family care, as they sought to support her during this challenging time. However, the truth could not remain concealed for long. Concerned about Graham's well-being, Turner reached out to her last treating doctor and was utterly stunned to learn the heartbreaking reality. Time was running out, and she had only a little left to live. Determined to ensure her family was informed, Turner contacted her loved ones in America, and one of her sons swiftly made his way to Liverpool. Early in October 1981, Graham was flown back to New York, but her condition had already taken a dire turn. Within hours of being admitted to the hospital, she tragically passed away at the tender age of 57, leaving behind a legacy of love, loss, and the untold depths of her enigmatic life. Rest in peace, and goodbye, Gloria Graham.